I'm going to start off talking to you a little bit about something I'm very passionate about. That's a trend that's going on. Brad used the word a couple of times earlier, placement. Uh, places are incredibly important. I am a big, big believer that the best cities in this country today are the cities that are investing heavily in great places for people. Uh, this is a shot here of Greenville, South Carolina. Anyone ever been to Greenville? Been to the Reedy River Falls Park? That's a place where they used to have an automotive bridge going over that covered up one of their most beautiful assets in the whole city. what they do? They tore it down, they built a pedestrian bridge, they enhanced the park, sort of a la Cascades Park like you would see here in Tallahassee, and now it's one of their best tourist and resident attractions, okay? So places are important, cities that are investing in places are doing big things today, and people are moving to those places quite a bit. Uh, I want to give you a little bit of history about you know places and downtowns and centers of commerce. I kind of thought you're in the beginning, right? Downtowns were important. Places matter. We design places for people. We gave them opportunity to interact on a daily basis as they went about their days. And then somewhere along the way, we really lost our uh, step. This picture right here could be anywhere USA. There's places like this in Tallahassee that look identical to this. With all these same brands, right? You see this lonely guy sitting here on the corner? This place was not designed for people. And when you do that, people lose the ability to really care and love about their community. Why would you? Because it looks like everywhere else. And in the last 20 years or so, something really started to change. You ever been to Seaside, Florida? Mm -hmm. You ever seen the Truman Show? Yeah. Right? Remember how you, there's a reason they filmed the Truman Show at Seaside, Florida, because it looks like this great, beautiful, small town feel where you know your neighbors. Hey, you remember that you walked out? Good afternoon, good evening, good night. People interact there. This was designed in the early 1980s, and it's really the first example of what's called new urbanism. And this is an opportunity where they designed a place for people once again. It's the first time anyone did that. What a crazy idea in quite some time. And uh, the designer, that guy named Andres Duani, put people first in Seaside. And ever since Seaside came on board, this idea of new urbanism and building places for people has really started to gather some steam. And cities have started in the last 20 years to, again, really invest in places for people. Uh, this is a shot of my favorite little thing we do here in downtown Tallahassee, the downtown market. Uh, local farmers markets started to pop up over the last 20 years at a rapid rate. Why? Because it's a very easy way to create a place for people to interact. A lot of these are happening in downtowns. You're seeing multiple of these popping up around Tallahassee right now. But this is just a great example of an easy little small thing you can do for a city to kind of get things moving if you're trying to be a place-making uh, uh, community. Some places really get what place-making means. They, like I said, they've really invested heavily in it. And when I say invested heavily in it, Sometimes that's just investing your time and your efforts and your energy more than it is hardscape dollars. Anyone been to Times Square in the last couple of years? Times Square used to be an automobile paradise. Now, you can't get one in the place. They started off just putting out simple tables and chairs and creating places for people to just gather, sit down. Uh, look at what it's done. They've now converted the entire area into a pedestrian-only plaza, and the results are fantastic. People can sit there and just watch the glory of Times Square and interact with each other. It's an important place for people now. Notice something about this too. You see those chairs? How many of you, when you got into your chair this morning, moved it an inch or two? <laughs> Fixed furniture is a bad idea. Put stuff out there that people can touch and move and feel that they have a little piece of that uh, that place when they put their butt in it, right? <laughs> next, time, next time you go somewhere, watch how many people, like if you go sit in Red Eye Coffee on a Wednesday morning, watch how many people move their chair around when they sit down. It's very interesting. But New York has is, is really uh, been a place that's led the way in this, both from the simple and the, uh, and the big time serious products. Anyone ever been to the High Line, New York City? Mm -hmm. yeah. This is my favorite example of what I like to call turning an eyesore into an asset, right? Think about it from a wayfinding perspective. You can find your way through blocks and blocks and blocks and walk and walk and walk and never realize how far you're actually moving because it's so beautiful and incredible. They took an abandoned railroad that was elevated through the sky of the city of New York and turned it into an urban park that goes on for miles. What an incredible idea, right? That's placemaking at its best. Uh, I think that placemaking 
And building up these great places really is important when you start with a vision. You have to have a vision for what your community can be, what it should be, and how you get there. This is one of my favorite quotes. This is a gentleman named Daniel Burnham. Anyone ever heard of Daniel Burnham? A couple of urban planners probably here. I don't know who he's at. Uh, Daniel Burnham was a planner around the turn of the 20th century, uh, particularly famous for doing two things. Uh, designing the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago, the World's Fair, and then designing the plan of Chicago. But he said, make no small plans, they lack the magic to stir men's blood. When I heard that about what you said about being, feeling deflated after hearing the city talk earlier, that made me think of this. <laughs> you need to stir people's emotions with your vision and your plan. If you don't, you're already lost. But Daniel Burnham uh, is a very important leader in urban planning. I always think about him when, uh, when we talk about placemaking. When I think about placemaking, I really do think about who's done it better than anyone I've ever seen. Walt Disney. <laughs> anyone ever been to Disney World? <laughs> Disney World, I think, is the most amazing, incredible thing I've ever seen. Think about downtown Tallahassee, right? Number one complaint I hear from people. There's nowhere to park. And wrong. Plenty of park. I have to walk up a hill or go around a corner, but well, there's plenty of park. When you get to Disney World, what's the first thing they do? They take away your car, they cram you into mass transit, they ship you across the swamp, you get in there, everything's overpriced, the kids are screaming, it's 100 degrees, the lines are long, you're wearing a fanny pack. <laughs> and what do they call it? The happiest place on earth. <laughs> what's amazing about Disney World to me, paying attention to the mouse, is you don't realize that you go in there on a daily you know, trip and you walk 10 miles because it's so overwhelming of an experience. Ever heard of anyone other than maybe a two-year-old getting lost in Disney World? No, you just find your way around because there's engaging stuff everywhere. They are the kings of placing. People, they make billions of dollars every year for people coming to a fake place. <laughs> <laughs> One of my uh, favorite examples of a smaller city that does really, really well with placemaking game is uh, Chattanooga. Anyone ever been to Chattanooga, Tennessee? Mm -hmm. This is Miller Plaza. Uh, if you go up there during the summertime, they have an incredible experience that you can go see on Friday nights called the Nightfall Concert Series. It's free, it's open to the public, thousands of people. The, the biker gangs in town actually come down there and park their bikes. There's all kinds of different <laughs> groups of people that come and interact in this place because it's a great place for people. They've had this mantra there, uh, former governor, now U.S. Senator Bob Corker, when asked once what his plan was, how did they get there, he says pretty simple, if it ain't cool, it ain't happening. that easy. <laughs> if it's not cool, we're not doing it. So I like to think about that a lot when uh, I see things that are going on in Tallahassee. Just last night, my friend T.J. Lewis, who's a former catalyst, uh, posted some pictures about the new designs of the Tallahassee Mall. And it, it's a really bad imitation of a bad looking downtown. <laughs> Why do we want to go to something like that when we've got the real deal right here? But that movie does it very well, and they've, uh, they've really invested heavily in who they want to be. They decided who they want to be, now they're being it through placement. I've shown you some really big projects that cost millions and millions of dollars. Those are very important for placemaking game. But it's also important to do the little things right. We talked about that big vision, having your spot on the wall that you're focused on, you know where you're going. You've got to chip away though. You've got to do the little things right in order to have an opportunity to go after the big things. So I call that acting small but thinking big. Small incremental projects can create much needed and very important precious momentum. Momentum is the most important thing in placemaking. It's the most incredible force on earth, I think. This is a, a, a picture from our good friends at the Florida State Department of uh, Fine Arts. We partnered with them just a few weeks ago to paint this brand new beautiful mural uh, on a, uh, talk about eyesores and assets. This is a building, if you remember the story from College Avenue a year ago, a young man died in this building. And a very negative piece of press, right? So what do we do? We paint a mural that people now are going out and taking pictures in front of. It's selfie time, baby. <laughs> we love things that people can take selfies in front of. So this is what we're trying to do. Again, little projects like this over time build into big momentum. This is another one of my favorite projects in Tallahassee. Anyone been to Smoky Hollow Plaza? Mm -hmm. I think that great places need to tell great stories. 
People identify with great, strong narratives. So if they're going to identify with a place, that place needs to have a great story as well. This is a it, Smoky Hollow, I think, for all intents and purposes in the greater community here, was a forgotten community. This was an African American community that was essentially bulldozed so we could build Appalachian Parkway in the 1960s and early 70s. This project calls for everyone in this community to remember who lived there, remember what they did, and remember their contributions to the city of Tallahassee. And they did it in a beautifully designed public space. There's more to come with Smoky Hollow, but I think this is going to be something you're going to start to see more and more of around the country. People telling great stories through the places that they're building. Placemaking is, is not a definable thing. It's kind of loosey-goosey, but you know it when you see it. Anyone been to Pensacola's downtown recently? They have got their act in order. They are doing some really good things. You got a great mayor, you got a great city commission who's on board. This is a project they did called Al Fresco. I love the way they define it. Fun Urban Dining. Boy, that's simple, wasn't it? Uh, they took an abandoned corner in downtown, put some trees out there, a little bit of landscaping, and dropped four old Airstream trailers off. Now they've got four restaurants operating out of each one of those Airstreams. If you go down there any night of the week, the place is packed. What happened because of that? Right across the street, you get new construction, you've got a new art gallery that's opened up, you've got new retail stores. People want to be where other people are, and they want to be in cool places. You know it when you see it. And there's nothing wrong with stealing other people's good ideas. <laughs> the best ideas are always stolen. Uh, we are, Tallahassee get, last year got designated a, a Main Street community, a community with Main Street program. This is one of their mantras, I love it. The best ideas are stolen. We meet with different downtowns all around the state of Florida throughout the year. And we talk about what other people are doing. People go, oh, well, hey, we can do that. I got a thousand bucks. Why not? So, how many cities here eventually that's got some kind of animal on the corner that painted a different color, right? Tons of them. Does that make those people love them any less? No. People love them. People love that kind of beauty stuff. The little, uh, I'll tell you one of these one libraries, those are popping up all over the country. Carpets. Y'all talked about carpets, I think, Betsy said. That, yeah, we're actually about to put one downtown starting Sunday, right in front of the visitor center. Uh, Portsmouth. I stole that idea from the folks at the elevator. Thought it looked good, we brought one downtown. Uh, you know, the best ideas are stolen. But all, the point of all these little projects like that, you want to give people something to believe in. They need to believe in their community. They need to believe that their neighborhood, their district, their little slice of earth is important and that it matters. And great place making projects do that. This is a cool project in. Uh, Nashville, Tennessee, there's an artist up there named Adrian uh, Supporti, probably butchered his last name. But he started by painting one of these I Believe in Nashville murals. And now they're everywhere. The same one all over the place. Guess what? Smoking diamonds. Everyone loves to get their pictures in front of us. This one's kind of weird. This kid one in the middle can't jump very good. <laughs> <laughs> He's not playing basketball. Uh, <laughs> believing in where you live is really important. Place making projects can give you something to latch on to, to point to your friends when they come in town. Hey, look how cool we are. Look what we're doing. And most importantly, how do you know when it's working? How do you know when your efforts are really coming together and they're starting to make a difference? You gotta look for the signs. You know what the best telltale sign that a great place is uh, happening around here is? Dog shit. <laughs> when people walk their dogs, they're usually walking them near where they live. If you're downtown and you see people walking dogs and that dog's taking a break, that's a good thing. Because odds are, they live in the neighborhood. If they live in the neighborhood, they love the neighborhood, they want to be in the neighborhood, they're going to have their dogs walking around. So look for people walking dogs. When I lived in Midtown and I was trying to do our Midtown project, I made it a point every single night to take my big goofy Labradoodle Leon out on the walk and I started him right down the middle of Thomasville Road. Because I want everyone to know that I live there and I walk my dog there and it's a great place to live and a great place to walk. And when you talk about, again, all these great things that are going on, these don't just happen by accident. Every city needs a keeper of the flame. You need someone who is dedicated who is committed, who believes in these places, who knows that they're going to get out. Like Betsy said, roll up your sleeves, not afraid to get dirty. This is a good example. This guy, Jason Roberts, he's from a little town just outside the suburb of Dallas called Oak Cliff, Texas. 
Anyone ever heard of building better blocks? He started a movement in his own neighborhood where they took a block of sort of somewhat abandoned old building, a broken down street, brought in removable trees, temporary benches, pop-up shops, creative murals and local artists, and over the course of a weekend, they made a better block. They came in and did some creative things that didn't cost much money, but it brought people out and it got them thinking about maybe tomorrow can be different than today in their own neighborhood. He's the keeper of the plan. Great artist in uh, Philadelphia, his name is Steve Powers. He did this really cool mural series uh, up there a couple of years ago called A Love Letter to You. When you're riding on the commuter rail to and from work, he put these up on the building on the way in, on the way out. I love these messages. Hold tight. Your ever after is all I'm after. <laughs> I miss you too often not to love. Boy, that's beautiful, isn't it? I just got a Hallmark card. <laughs> see me like I see you. Beautiful. I love this stuff. When you see stuff like this on your dreary ride to and from work, you feel a little better. You feel a little bit better about where you live too, which is really important. And so when you think about all these little projects and uh, you think about how you can get involved in your community, place making is the answer. Go do something, go make something happen that makes people see the place they see every day a little bit different. And for you guys, as you're moving into this wayfinding project and this task, I charge you with a simple thing. Go find a place and make it great. Because if you can find a place, you do something important, you change what people think about it, they'll start to find their way to it. And if you can create small identifiable landmarks, people will go from place to place to place, just like this. They'll move all around without realizing how far they've actually moved. And in Tallahassee, I think that these small place-making efforts are creating big momentum, and I think they're changing the way people view our community. Place making, you're all gonna be place makers. I think it's very important. So